We're here at Sun and Fun, where a new engine was introduced. I had a little hint of this, but you wouldn't tell me much. My name's Dan Johnson, I'm talking to Scott Hayes, and you're going to tell me everything now. Is that right? Yes, I am. Alright, so what do we got here? This little tiny package. What is this all about, Scott? This is a, a compact diesel engine that was made for the LSA market specifically. Beautiful. So, we love three, to hear that. Three cylinder, six piston, two stroke diesel. <laughs> That's quite a mouthful. Let's it review. is. That's why All I right, I see the, these are the injectors right here, yes, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Common but, rail, three injectors. But only three cylinders, and yet six pistons. Yes, sir. Isn't there, isn't there a little conflict in there? Yes, and we like conflict in this particular instance. How does that work? The pistons come together, they actually hesitate for a second, and move together, and then the combustion happens, and it forces them apart. Yeah. So they're kind of making their own compression. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, that sounds pretty clever. Is this, a, is this a new concept? Did you guys originate this, or is this kind of history? No, it does have a little bit of history. There's some uh, some lineage back to World War II, the German design of this oh, particular really? power plant. Yes, sir. But horsepower weight ratio, it's very efficient. It has no valve train, which makes it about 30% fewer moving Now, parts. is that a function of the cylinder, of the opposing pistons, or the two-stroke, or both? I like that you ask that. And I have a cylinder liner. This would be the liner itself that the pistons would ride within. Oh, okay. The intake ports, the exhaust ports, as you see they're machined in. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's really a slick process. So there's no valves that open and close like a like a typical gasoline engine would have. Does that translate to less moving parts inside this engine? About 30% fewer moving parts. Wow. So we actually, you know, as a company we've always been pro overhaul. So we actually have this engine set up, so we have an overhaul kit that actually has these components already ready to go. You we know, you bring train on it a little bit. You know, we, we just wouldn't want to put it out sure, there, but sure. it, but it's not rocket science to overhaul this. Well, let's back up a little bit yes, since sir. you mentioned parts. Superior is a company we know for many many years, but not as an engine maker. As well, sort of an engine maker, yes, but. Sir. More of a comp I think it'd be more of as a component company. Is that a miscorrection? That, that is a little bit of an overstatement. We okay. started out in 1967 with valve guides, and that erupted into all the components in a, in a cylinder. So you started out as a component company. And then the whole so cylinder. I just have old memories. Then cases, then cranks, and they were all PMA okay. and went that route. And then we actually went through a, a whole line of XP engines that we do, a 320, 360, 382, and a 400 as well as we have a certified 180 horsepower that we just recently STC'd on a 172R S model. Oh, uh, okay. So you're pretty deep into this whole engine thing. Yes, sir. <laughs> We'd like to think. So all those engines, they're all gas engines, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is this the first diesel for Superior? This is the first diesel, yes. And what made you go diesel? Well, what we've seen around the world, because we are a global company and our responsibilities, in fact, are that way, but when you go through Central and South America, parts of Africa, there just is no... Not much avgas. Not right? much avgas, and actually a very poor auto fuel. So in some parts of the world, I wouldn't want to climb into an airplane and make a cross-country flight with a fuel of that grade. Yeah. So there really is a global... Yeah, difference. we're a little spoiled in this country. We think uh, auto gas is a great thing for airplane engines, like, for example, Rotax, and it is. Yes, but here we've got a much more predictable situation about the quality of gas. Sir. But yes, these sir. things burn just about anything that burns, right? Yes, sir. Very easily on diesel, jet A, or biodiesel. So, what are you now? This is brand new for you. You're just getting started with this. This is a piece of technology that we acquired. Superior Parts ah, okay. bought it. It actually has got some significant flight time in airships. Oh, oh really? In a vectored format, so these engines can operate 90 degree up or down, which makes them somewhat flexible. Not that we do that in light sport aircraft. No sir. No sir. Just being humorous. Okay, so you got a lot of history with this already. You're not coming and going. Okay, we're going to see if we can make it work. You know you can make it work. Correct. All right. Correct. And so, what's, uh, what are you projecting then for things like, uh, talk, talk to me about weight, talk to me about power, and talk to me about TVO times. Power, this particular format is a 100 horsepower format. Okay, we have perfect. a turbocharged format that goes to 125. Okay. They weigh right... You got that already? Uh, the turbo is, is in development. Okay. I'll have that second quarter of 2016. Okay. All right. So that's coming pretty soon then. Weight-wise, what we see on this installed at the 100 horsepower level is just under 200 pounds. Okay. So that now is a little heavier than, little let's heavier say, a Rotax. Than a 916 Rotax. Yes, sir. Uh, but what you can do is you can carry less fuel for the same range package, so you can offset the weight differential in fuel. Okay. So talk to me about fuel burn then. What we find is about four gallons an hour is what we see in a typical cruise package. Okay. Uh, 
depending on which airframe it goes into, theoretically we can go a little less than that. Yeah. If it's a dirtier airframe in terms of parasitic drag, the fuel burn goes up a little. But it, it mirrors that. So makes sense. Makes very sense. fuel efficient. The uh, the torque is a big deal on diesel engines. How do, how does this one compare for torque? It has a very flat torque build. And why is that good? Uh, because you can reduce power uh, in, in terms of RPM and still have significant torque. I see. To okay. Turn the if it ramped up steeply, you'd have to pull back just a little bit. Correct. With Correct. a shallow angle, you can pull back. Really pull back a I got it. Okay. So when you talk about getting into the endurance package to really spend some time aloft, this is a great power plant for that. So you're going to have, and you know already, we talked about this down at Sebring, that the worldwide community for light sports, not just the USA here, Correct. and you're already planning on that, but there's a lot of airplanes being sold outside of the U.S. that people don't even know about that uh, because of the ASTM standards. That brings me to ASTM then. And will you go through that process with that organization? Are you investigating that already? Yes, sir. At the 100 and the 125, we're investigating the ASTM. We actually have some plans for greater than 300 horsepower that will go through the typical FAA certification process okay right yeah those other bigger ones uh, and there's a lot of that uh, we call them LSA 4.0 or or right. uh, the new GA or or uh, light sports that are going into the GA market uh, they're gonna be looking at that engine I'm sure yes sir. okay well let's talk about a couple other nitty-gritty details first of all about uh, electrical power output now uh, that may not be engine related particularly but tell me what the capabilities are well this engine as we talked about earlier produces a tremendous amount of torque so it can bear the brunt of pretty much anything you want to hang off of it it can be a 12 volt system a 24 volt system it's truly up to you and what you'd like to have that's sort of the airframe yes, decision sir. about that yes, part sir. of it and you okay. notice we use just a standard automotive uh, i mean excuse me a standard skytech starter right so the components are readily available. Okay, how about TBO on this guy? TBO, we're going to recommend a 2,000 hour TBO, not a TBR. Uh, as you can see, these sleeves will press in and out. It's not a complex TBO at all. I don't even know what TBR is. A time, time before replacement? Yes, sir. Okay, so TBO is uh, an inspection kind of thing. Correct. Right? That's the difference. All right. Correct. Well, that's great. Um, We've actually already built the kits for the TBO. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, well, you're ahead of the game, but then, as I thought, you were a component company. You should be ahead of that game. That's great. How about uh, service uh, uh, capability? How are you going to handle service out in the field? We're in the process of setting up our service infrastructure as well. As I said, we've got the kits already built up. We've got a certification process we're laying out to become familiar with how it works. Well, we've got to do some training here, yes, obviously. Sir. You we, mentioned that earlier. Correct, because even though it's got a 2,000 hour TBO, if you were to have a prop strike the first day you have it, we've got to have a mechanism for you to Yeah, be true. To uh, you're right. It could happen right away. Too. And, and you, you don't plan for those things, but they do in fact happen well, occasionally. You better plan. Right, ah, I guess. There you go. Okay, one last question. How about warranty? Warranty, I'm still in the process of developing warranty. I can tell you it will mirror more of our gasoline side. We like to do 1,000 hours in uh, two years as, as sort of our baseline warranty. You think you can reach that with this? Uh, yes, sir, I did. Okay. Where do we find you on the web to get even more information about this new discovery here? We're at GeminiDiesel.Aero. Okay. We've got that on the screen. Speaking with Scott Hayes here. What's your title, Scott? Vice President of Sales and Marketing. All right, so it's a big man at the company. He's the right one to talk to, and we did. Thanks for joining us here. You can find lots more about affordable aviation of all kinds on bydanjohnson.com. We appreciate you coming along with us to visit with Scott and myself here at Southern Fund.